Another week of Call of the Night, and this anime just cannot miss. I thought this week might be the week that it missed, and it just simply did it. Like, Studio Linden Films has just, it has a masterpiece on its hands. And the reason that I started off the video that way is, Ko pissed me off this week. Yamori pissed me off this week. And it was so slight and it was for such a small amount of time because what ended up happening is the episode you know it, it started off like each week the the night is the star uh ko is sneaking out and he's having his moment with nazana he's reflecting on the kiss from last week uh he ends up running away from her and i was like oh my god like this episode is not doing it for me it's not hitting those same highs that it's been hitting but if we move past that around like the five minute mark, maybe like maybe not even five minutes, it, it felt like a really short time. We immediately transition into the Akira stuff and we get her a couple of times. And Akira was really the star of this episode. So I'm trying to think if I want to start off with the negative, or if I want to start off with the positive and then move into the negative at the end. And I think I'm going to do just that. So. Akira was definitely the star this week, and we get to see kind of, a, a, initially, we get to see, and this is where I find it extremely interesting, we get to see a glimpse into her life, which looks very lonely, and on her bed, you know, we get to see her go through the whole, you know, uh, we, we get to see her go through the whole rigmarole of, you know, her getting home from school, eating, uh, you know, taking a shower, getting to bed early, she goes to sleep early, you know, she studies, she goes to sleep early, and so much so that she was able to sleep for a few hours and wake up at midnight, okay? So we got to see her kind of go through all of that, uh, kind of like, you know, a very lonely existence that she has. Now, I don't know, and the reality is I don't know if Akira's parents are around, not around, they could be working very late, for some reason, in Japanese animation a lot, like, the parents are almost always non-existent, which isn't, like, it It can be, but it's not always the case. Typically, what I've what I've seen and heard from, like, real people in real life, uh, from, from uh, friends, is typically the dad is kind of the one who's kind of MIA, uh, and the mom's usually the one at home. So it's very untypical for the parents just to be non-existent. So that tells me that a couple of things. That tells me there's potential that one of Akira's parents maybe no longer exists, is not in the picture anymore. And the other parent is out doing whatever to support. Now, the weird thing is, even at midnight, they still seem to be kind of non-existent. And the reason that I say that, you know, the non-existent part is even when we find out later in the episode where Akira's sleeping, she's like, oh, I haven't said good night in a very long time. So again, a very lonely existence that Akira is living. And as a viewer, and I'm sure you felt this way, as a viewer, that really makes you feel a lot of things, you know? Because, like, already I was loving Akira as a character. I immediately fell in love with her as a character. Then when we got to see kind of, like, a glimpse into her life, I was like, oh, my God, like, I think I just fell in love with this character. She's sexy AF. And, you know, on top of other things, she's, like, she's uh, s sad and gloomy. And, like, I don't know why. I was, like, extremely attracted to that. Like, I like that. Don't tell my wife. Uh, but I like that quite a bit. And uh, we got to see all of like the Akira stuff, okay? And then we we and then we transition, and then we finally get to like the the meat uh, and potatoes of the episode, which is uh, Akira, um, you know, looking at her phone. She's like, "Damn, it's 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 midnight." This girl puts on her effing school uniform, and she takes off at night. And uh, thankfully, she was able to meet Yamori or Ko, whatever. She was able to meet him, and he's like, "Yo, what? You got your school uniform on? It's uh." It's the middle of the night. It's midnight. And she was like, uh, you know, I'm going to head out early. And he's like, what you mean you're going to head out early? Like, it, it's it's midnight. Uh, and then they they have, like, a little spat about, you know, sleeping and not sleeping at night. And she's like, I actually sleep. He's like, it's midnight. What you mean you sleep? And she's like, I go to sleep really early. Uh, Ko doesn't, you know. He lives a whole other type of existence. Uh, and I like how they associated. Then we finally got to see them go off and spend time with Nazuna. And uh, we got to see a lot of the kissing stuff, a lot of, like, she offers up to kiss again. Nazuna, uh, you know, her and Ko have a conversation with, like, oh, friends kiss, blah, 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 which, no, they don't. Uh, and, the, you know, they have that whole thing. And then they go back and they play some PlayStation, where I like how they, um, I like how they, they play Doki Doki Literature Club, but a version of that on the PlayStation. They also play Street Fighter, so weird, so cool. 
uh, and they have some uh, some really cool, engaging conversation. Uh, during this time, Ko finally comes out and tells Akira really what he's been doing uh, and what he what what what's driving him and his goal, which is to become a vampire. Uh, Akira really doesn't um, react in the way that Ko thought he would, uh, and we got to see a really cool, wholesome scene and conversation, and Nazuna kind of navigating all of that. And eventually, you know, and there's funny moments in there too, where you know Nazuna just sucks up, sucks up uh, Ko in the middle of it, and he gets really embarrassed. He's like, I told you not to do that in front of my friend, and uh, you know, we had all that happen, you know. And then we finally get them to go to bed, and we get the bed scene. And I like how uh, Nazuna was like, "Oh, normally it's guy girl, uh, but this time it's guy girl girl." You know what I mean? And Akira was like, "Oh, it's a tight squeeze." I really love that. And then freaking Yamori, like something smells so nice, referring to Akira here. Uh, then they share a sweet and wholesome scene uh, where you know they touch hands a little bit, you know. And really, like Akira is like, I'm telling you guys, like I told you guys last week, Akira is like the girlfriend. Nazuna is like the vampire girlfriend, which is really really cool. Uh, and Akira is, like, super smooth with it, too, because, you know, the whole time um, Ko is like this, right? He has, like, his hands uh, on his chest or whatever to not touch either of them. And even Akira was like, yo, you can't sleep if you're uncomfortable. Like, lower lower your lower yourself, you know? She's like, it's okay if you touch me a little bit. You know what I mean? She's so smooth. I was like, damn, girl, she can get it. You know, she's smooth with it. And I like how she's, like, you know, finessing our boy Yamori. Uh, and I really love that. And then they shared the, you know, really cool scene and they slept together and she wakes up and she rushes out to school. She slept probably like four hours or something. So she still made it to school probably in time, but ran a little bit late. So I loved all of that. And I loved Akira being the star of this episode. It was just really cool. And I love how I'm already in love with Nazu. And I think Nazu is probably best girl of the season so far for sure. Uh, and then they introduced Akira. And arguably, I kind of like Akira a little bit more. Uh, not for the same reasons, though. Drastically different reasons. I just kind of like the way she's depicted. Again, like I said, very uh, depressing and gloomy and lonely. And just, like, it just makes you want to, like, it makes you want to jump in the screen and, like, go take care of her, you know, give her a hug. You know what I mean? Be like, yo, I'll give you a walkie-talkie, girl. I'll give you a little walkie-talkie you have on your bedside and just kind of look at and say goodnight to every day. I'm just like, damn, yo, Cole, you need to marry your wife or up, bro. Uh, but I, lo I love her so much, so... We have all that. So that's what I loved about the episode. And it's just something so special is that this uh, anime really is. Okay, so I said I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the positive. Last minute, I'm going to take up the negative. So here's, wh here's where my negatives were. Ko, this whole time, is confused, right? He was like, he was like oh, what did Nazuna do? Did she, did, was she, did she kiss me? You know, was she kissing me? Was she being affectionate? Like, he was playing so dumb. And I'm like, this kid's 14 or 15 years old. And I'm like... In no way, in no God's given earth, you know, in no realm, are you going to be confused as to what a kiss is? Like, she kissed you, bro. Like, how are you going to be confused at what that is? And I'm just like, in no way, like, why is he so confused about love or affection or kissing? Like, no person on this earth is that confused. Especially, he has a family. He has parents. Like, you know, my kids see me love up on, on their mother, which is my wife, all the time. You know what I mean? You know? Very wholesome, uh, you know, normal stuff. You know what I mean? Like showing affection, kissing, huggy, normal stuff. And they're like, you know, obviously their kids are like, ew, you know, whatever. But they see that. So it's like, you did, did, you, did your parents never like, you know, do absolute like not hug or kiss or anything to show affection? Like, why are you so confused at it? Like, how much of a big ass moron are you? And it, it was a little too much for me to where it like, kind of triggered me a little bit. I was like, yo, there's no way this idiot is that confused as showing affection and, and, uh, and kissing and to be like, oh, what was that? Like, are you for real? So I'm not going to really spend much time on it, but that part of Ko and Yamori's character I do not like. I get that he's trying to figure out what love is. And even this episode, they kind of contradict themselves because uh, Nazuna was like, oh, what you were thinking was lust basically getting a hard on as opposed to love. Because uh, he was thinking like, oh, I'm in love now. And I get that he can be confused about love. When you're young, you're going to be confused about love. But definitely like not being confused about like what showing affection or kissing is like you're not that much of an idiot, right? Like, okay. So I'm going to leave you guys on that thought there. Let me know what you guys thought was this week's episode down in the comments below. And my friends, I'll see you guys next week for this masterpiece we call Call of the Night. Peace.